Hello everyone, this is Nintendoc2, and welcome to another mod pack sort of launcher related video. Last time I probably did this was I think the data pack specific one, so it's been a while. But um, yeah, I came across this from Scott Armato, so credit to him. But um, I thought I'd cover it myself just to see how much there is as a first impression is just going what sort of mod loaders does it support, what sort of possibilities can I use it for, customization, anything, just going into more depth like I typically try to do with my videos is go into whatever depth I can um, as of the version that it is. So yeah, and it is an interesting launcher, um, but yeah. So, obviously, a bit of a description based on what its goal is. It's driven by the community, there's Curse Forward mod pack support, and you can also search for mods as well. User friendly UI, it's customizable, it works on multiple OS platforms, and it's open source. You can manage instances that are vanilla or Forge with ease. You can get stuff from Curse Forge, and here's a few screenshots to give you an idea of how you can use it. You can donate, and there's obviously the downloads there. So once you get it, you obviously will end up here, besides having a feature and bug fix window. So after that, obviously, we greeted with this, which obviously has Minecraft news, it has their social links, it does have a button that says install 115.2, but I've already done that, so it'll create this one here, compared to the other ones that I've just created myself. Um, on the right is obviously profile specific stuff, so it's just email and um, email, password, and um, an icon that you can do here. And then when you hover over instances, you can find out information such as the MC version, or how many minutes or hours you've played of instance, whether it be just, you know, your typical, or if it's a mod pack, it'll also detail the amount of mods installed. This doesn't count Forge specific stuff, so Forge, MC, Coda Pack, and otherwise aren't listed here. Um, and it obviously will have a Forge icon here if it is um, modded. Otherwise, you can browse Curse Forge mod packs. So you've got your typical Curse Forge filter system. If I wanted to go for, say, an author, which will go with there, doesn't seem to have changed anything, but obviously. It's looking for anything that has the words I've listed here, and since the following are here, it's going between duck or suntanned. Um, you can't select authors' names though, so keep that in mind if you wanted to find others, you'd have to actually go to Curse Forge to find that out. You can, however, obviously find out information about it. So depending on what was actually put on the um, what pack page by the creator, so whether it be just certain things that have happened with it, a description about it, a mod list, changes, what its goal is, this and the other. You can obviously view that, which is also what the explorer is, besides just clicking on its name. You can obviously download if need be. Otherwise though, when actually going to the instance, you can launch it, manage it, which allows you to change the Java memory amount if you've got a 64-bit system. The default is obviously 4 gigs of RAM. And you've got Java arguments if you want to do a bunch of other technical aspects there to um, make it more suitable to you. Obviously, you can change the instance name, you can rename it, which I'm assuming is just confirming. Um, you can install Forge if it's an um, instance that doesn't already have Forge installed, if it's a vanilla one. Um, instance does not allow mods, because obviously we don't have mods. Resource packs, worlds, and screenshots don't have anything to show yet, because they're still in development. But if we did want to show one that already has um, Forge installed, there is obviously the ability to remove Forge, as well as a companion mod aspect, which I'm assuming is for updating related means. So if Forge is updated, uh, and you haven't obviously got it yet, it may already do it for you, or as long as as long as long I'm assuming you have the launcher open, um, not that it's a background thing, I'm not sure, or it's just for saying, hey, there's mods that are available to update and such. 
That's my guess, I don't know exactly, but you can obviously enable or disable that, and it's disabled by default. There's no mods installed in that one, I forgot about that. So I'll just go to this 1710 one I have here. I can obviously use the checkboxes for selecting multiple, I can enable or disable mods, I can delete them, I can update them, I can add more, and the same filtering system here. If we go and search, we'll just go, I guess, GEI or something, enter that in, and it'll try and filter through anything it can find. Okay, maybe I might change that a bit, um, I don't know, use storage or something, for example. There we go. And I'm assuming it'll go against the um, version you're looking for, so this will probably be a 1.7.10 version of easy storage, and you've got the information of the mod there, you obviously install it, select a version, yeah, so these are 1.7.10 versions, and you can select the latest you want, and there's obviously, it's stating what sort of um, levels of development it's been through, so if there is an alpha version, there is that, and it probably will just state stable or beta if there's only ever been that. Um, otherwise though, you can obviously filter out mods, so just for example, um, Chroma, you can see that, or you can delete, I'm assuming, just the information there, not the entire mod pack, because um, that would be part of the right-clicking here. You can also repair a mod pack if obviously it has issues, um, so it'll just possibly either refresh it, or it'll just get mods differently, or it'll reset up Forge, or certain things like that. That's more so my guess. Um, I don't know if it'll count for automatically downloading the latest version, um, rather than you know, having a possibly less working version. Um, you can import as well from Twitch, select the zip, the instance name, you can import. And other than that, there is the settings here, which allows you to change between a stable or beta version of the launcher. You can enable or disable sounds, you can copy email, username, or add an icon, which I've just got the default there. You can access the Java arguments and memory aspects, or a or detected Java path. You can select where instances will appear, which obviously is appearing in the same sort of locations as my vanilla.minecraft. Um, clear shared data, overriding default instance paths, and then you can change the color of the launcher if you want. So we'll just go with some random color. And it does also seem to work immediately rather than just um, what's there. So I'm assuming that's going to save it. Yeah, so that is a bit right. So that's the secondary colour there. And obviously there's a bunch to select if you wanted. The primary colour is mostly for the tabs rather than the secondary being for the launcher itself. And there is a bunch of themes as well that are obviously pre-made that you can select between besides your own. Uh, otherwise though, if we actually go to the location We'll just get the... I'll try to find where it was again. Um, just need to scale this a bit. Where was it again? Um, import, that's what I was after. If we go to import and import pack, which there isn't anything selected. Um, obviously, any that you've got in Twitch you can do. Um, and other than that, I think there was something else I was missing. Um, adding a new instance, that's right, I was looking for the um, path, that's it, here we go. So, when you actually go about finding the instance's path, you find it obviously similar to how I have with my vanilla.minecraft, or the um, data pack creator that I have, you can obviously find GD launcher here and any of its stuff related to it, so any instances I've got, it's got obviously 1.7.10 and 1.15.2 for mod packs or instances, you can find those there, any other aspects of the game, local storage, metadata, cache, and so on. So if you wanted to find any of that information or folders, you can. Otherwise though, that seems to be pretty much it at the moment. Um, otherwise though, yeah. Obviously you can use it for Forge, you can use it for Curse Forge mod packs, you can use it for vanilla instances, you can change them to modded as much as you want, change, customize the launcher and so on. But yeah, I am interested to see how it goes from here.
Thanks so much for watching.